Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Parked Car Phantom 81 here. In this video, I'm gonna be comparing stocks and bonds and how stocks can sort of act as bonds in one's portfolio uh, during very strategic times. And so given that really long title, uh, first I wanna give a shout out because this idea is not my own. Um, this is from another YouTuber named Ryan Giffen. So Ryan's a very good friend of mine. Um, he has a very solid channel, whether you're an experienced investor or a new investor. Um, he has such a simple and intuitive and easy to understand strategy that I think is actually really powerful. Um, and you're going to see as his account performs very well in the short term and the long term. Um, so yeah, five star recommendation uh, from myself. So go ahead and check out his channel. I'll put it in the description down below. Basically what he said um, a long time ago, he said that he uses dividend stocks as his bonds. And so obviously before people get too technical he's not saying that they're the same thing because obviously there's a really big difference between the two um you know when the market actually does correct then we will see that bonds tend to out of reform stocks you know by and large i don't think it's it's that really comparable especially during really big corrections once money is heading for the exits right so that's not exactly the point here uh the point here is that um in many situations let's say um, the market's at all-time high and uh, all-time highs and there's no opportunities and you want to get your money working for you passively and paying you a dividend while getting exposure to the amazing growth that dividend growth stocks can actually give you then uh, dividend growth stocks are actually a fantastic place to park your money in a lot of situations so there's that aspect the other aspect is that um, when the market actually does correct it's entirely possible that some of these dividend growth stocks will actually tend to outperform heavier growth stocks. Um, so as we saw um, here in March of 2021, um, I'm not gonna call it a correction because the S&P 500 barely budged like 5% or something or 4.5%. But we did see what was a huge discrepancy between um, growth and the rest of the market. So we're talking genomics, we're talking 3D printing, we're talking solar energy, um, software, cloud, semiconductors, consumer discretionary, it doesn't really matter, right? All these growth stocks, got pummeled um, in just a short time, right? We're talking like a week or two or three weeks. Um, and uh, and basically, some of these stocks actually dropped like 20% or 30% or 40%, even 50% from their all-time highs. And so the point I want to make here is that a lot of dividend growth stocks did not actually, uh, you know, drop that much. And so the third point I want to make here is that when you have some of these amazing high-quality growth stocks, you know, down below their all-time highs at 35, 40%. And you look to the left or the right of your portfolio and you see some of these other stocks, especially financials, especially energy, especially some of the more Dow 30 stocks. Um, the Dow's been performing pr pr pretty well, actually. So um, when you have some of these older school stocks actually performing pretty well, um, the question is, what do you do, right? You have a 35% heavy hitter, 35% uh, drawdown heavy hitter, um, looking at you right in the face and you have something like, I don't know, let's say JPM, right? Um, at all time highs, what are you going to do? Especially if you don't have any cash left. And so this is one of those situations where like, there's no rules to the stock market, right? I mean, obviously the idea is we're supposed to invest in high quality companies for the long term, et cetera. But when I have a 35% drawdown staring me in the face, and I don't have that much cash. I'm gonna move my money around. And so that's exactly what I did. That's exactly what happened. Um, I didn't have as much cash as I would have wanted. And um, yeah, I put my money into more of these um, speculative sectors, I guess you could call them. I don't even know if we can call them speculative because honestly, some of these software stocks perform so well. Um, and just because they grow so much, they're given like the name of speculative, um, but they're actually pretty strong stocks, right? And so those are basically the three points that um, I think is in that phrase dividend stocks can serve as bonds sometimes or some stocks can serve as bonds sometimes let me know if you guys agree or disagree but that's um you know that's basically what i did and that's probably what i'll continue to do right because for example as the nasdaq starts to creep back to all-time highs um i might take some off the table um and you know if the market continues to go back to all-time highs and i have incoming cash coming in let's say i'm not investing in growth well i have two options one is to invest in dividend growth stocks um, especially because in a portfolio of like 50 dividend growth stocks, some of them are going to get, you know, hit uh, periodically. Um, as we saw, like Clorox and Procter & Gamble and Kimberly-Clark actually get hit recently, right? So 
there always, there's always gonna be some sector that needs a little bit of extra love, I would say. Um, and so, you know, that's one option when the market's at all time highs in terms of what to do with the extra cash. The other option is to just build a cash reserve in general um, and do nothing with it. And that's honestly a fine option. The other option is to use that cash to sell cash secured puts on stocks that you wanna own more of. That's another option. So yeah, basically um, what I wanna get out of this video is, is to say that like, there's a lot of options that you have with your money at any given time. Uh, whether the market's at all-time highs or whether the market's correcting pretty deeply. And I think just knowing what those options are and, you know, doing what feels right, regardless of what's, you know, against the rules or what's with the rules, um, I think, um, you know, is, is part of the, the journey that we all take in terms of becoming better investors. So with that out of the way, let me know what you guys think of, of the comments. Um, and yeah, let me know if you agree or disagree. And I'll see you guys in the next video.